Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be on how to get spring ready skin. I really hope you have been enjoying my daily videos this month. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my uploads or turn on notifications if my videos don't go into your subscription box. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I prep my skin for fake tanning and my favourite tan to use at the moment, my whole kind of skincare, body skincare routine. But before I show you that I wanted to tell you the inspiration behind making this video. I've recently collaborated with the Teenage Cancer Trust, myself and a guy called Jake Quickerden, who is a singer, musician, you guys might know him from X Factor. We got together to help Teenage Cancer Trust on their Shunburn campaign. Shunburn is a campaign aimed at raising awareness for skin safety in the sun, especially between 13 and 24 year olds, but for everyone really. It's obviously a topic that means a lot to me, as a lot of you might know, my auntie passed away from skin cancer and myself and my dad go to get our moles checked every six months. So it's something I think about a lot and something that's very important to me. I remember as a teenager that it was really lame to be the person putting on sun cream. It was the cool thing to do to sunbathe and to have a tan. And I just think times have changed. Fake tan isn't orange and patchy anymore and I can definitely see a difference in people's attitudes towards the sun now, which is amazing. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my kind of top tips for staying safe in the sun. So stay tuned for those, so important. Please kind of take note and don't be ignorant towards the topic. Before I do that though, I thought I would give you guys an option. If you don't wanna lay out in the sun, if you wanna be a bit more safe about your skin, fake tan is the best alternative option. And as I said, times have changed so much. Fake tan is so much better than it used to be. I used to be so scared of it as a teenager. I never ever wanted to try fake tan. I thought I would just come out looking orange. Nothing more embarrassing than having like stripy fake tan all over your wrists. So I kind of just avoided it. But over the years, since doing beauty blogging, I've been able to experiment with different brands and formulas and I figured out what I like. And I think I've shown you my Zen Tan routine in the past and my Saint Tropez Express. That's the one in the blue bottle. I really like that. But today I'm showing you a different fake tan. And I thought I'd talk you through like the four steps I do when trying to get spring ready skin. So the first and most important step for me is exfoliating my skin. Exfoliating just gets rid of any dry skin, any patches, smooths out everything and just makes a nice blank canvas. There's a few things you can use for this. I really like the Zentan Face and Body Exfoliator. This is a fake tan brand. So it's an exfoliator that's specifically for tanning and that means that there hasn't got too many oils in it and it won't kind of disrupt the tan or make it go patchy. So I'm really liking using this at the moment. I've used quite a bit. Another thing I use for my exfoliating is actually my epilator. I'll talk to you about this in a minute, but if you take the lid off the epilator, this one is the Braun Silk Epil 9 and it comes with an exfoliating head or a brush head. So you take that part of the lid off and then you click the brush on and I love this as like a body brush. Let me turn it on for you. So the brush spins and you can use your exfoliator or shower gel and this I find is the best exfoliation because it really does get rid of any rough skin and you can use it in the shower, it's great. So step two is actually epilating. I've spoken a bit about epilating in the past. I know that it's something a lot of people are really scared of, but I swear I am such a wuss and it's just so worth it. It does hurt, of course it hurts more than shaving. I don't think it hurts more than waxing to be fair, but it's so, so worth it. And the reason I love epilating is because unlike shaving, when I used to shave my legs, I swear the hair would grow back by the evening. With epilating, the hair takes like at least a week to grow back and when it does, it's thinner. It's not thicker like when you shave. I absolutely love it and I do this after exfoliating just to get rid of any hairs. I do it on my legs. I do my arms as well. I never used to do my arms, but since doing it, I've just really enjoyed having kind of smoother arms. I will show you like a before and after of my arms. They're not that bad at the moment, but if as long as you keep it up, sometimes I wait like too long to epilate and then when the hairs are long, it hurts even more. So definitely try and do it regularly. Step three is to moisturize. And I can never really get my head around moisturizing before fake tan. For some reason, it just seems bizarre in my head, but it does really help. If you moisturize your ankles, knees, elbows, wrists, here, wherever you think you're gonna get slightly patchy, it really does help. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not completely clued up on whether it matters what sort of body lotion you use. The one I'm using at the moment is the Ameliorate body lotion that I mentioned in my monthly favorites video, but this has AHA in it, and I wonder if that's gonna affect the tan. I think it's okay to use before you tan, but maybe using this after you tan might not be a great idea because it might kind of exfoliate the tanned bits, if you know what I mean. But I think this is really good to use before because it really smooths out your skin. So I kind of put that all over really, but mainly focusing on any dry areas. 
Now the fourth and final step is to fake tan and the tan I'm using at the moment is the Bondi Sands Liquid Gold. I was quite scared of this when I first got it because the packaging I think is a bit intimidating. I definitely think that's something that the tanning industry needs to think about more. I think if you want to convert people to fake tanning who don't usually tan, then I think the packaging needs to be less like focused on being really, really, really tanned because some people just want like a subtle glow. Anyway, this is a self tanning dry oil. It's got a really nice coconut scent. And the thing that's great about this is you don't have to wash it off. So my Sandra Pay tan, as much as I love it, you have to apply it and you can either wash it off in the shower one, two or three hours after application. This one, you can just apply and then you're done, you leave it. So it comes in a spray bottle, a bit like sun cream. And I like to work in sections when I fake tan. So I'll focus on the lower part of my leg, the upper part of my leg, my stomach, my left arm, my right arm, and then my chest. If I get rich doing my back, I tell him to do it in like top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And I apply it with a mitt. I think this is the best way to apply fake tan. You can get these in Boots or Superdrug. They're pretty cheap. One side is kind of a bit furrier and that's the side that you use. So you just pop it on your hand and you spray the tan onto where you want to have it and then you apply it with the mitt and kind of rub it in. And the annoying thing about this tan is there isn't really a guide color, so you can't really see how much you've applied or how tanned you're gonna be, but you just have to kind of remember where you've applied it and be quite quick with the application. I use a couple of layers of this and then it takes about 15 minutes to dry maybe, you can get dressed straight away and it develops over 24 hours. So if I do it in the evening, the kind of next evening, I feel like it's done developing and it does get quite dark actually. I think if you just want a subtle tan, one layer of this is fine. I always think if I'm gonna go through the hassle of exfoliating the tanning, I want it to be like a tan that's worth it. I think this tan doesn't last quite as long as the saint Pay one. I feel like with the saint Pay one, I could be tanned for up to a week. This one is maybe kind of four days of good tan before I feel like I need to exfoliate again. It's so handy though if you are in a rush because it's a dry oil, you can just apply it and go. I usually take what's left on the mitt and use it on my hands and feet and a bit on my face, but I do find that because the skin on my face is so different to my body and it needs a bit of extra care, I like to use a separate tan for my face. And for this one, I use the Clarins Liquid Bronze Self Tanning. I've used this forever. It's just a lotion you put on cotton wool pads and you apply over your face at night time. It's very subtle, it's very different to this. It's not like an, a sudden fake tan look, but it's just a subtle glow. And then I feel like you can use makeup to bronze up your face quite easily. So I want to give you guys some tips for staying safe in the sun. And I really hope that the stigma of being safe in the sun will eventually go. Everyone has very different skin types, but there are certain sun safety things that everyone should really follow. So first of all, if you do have molds on your body, whether it's just a few or loads like I have, it is really important to get them checked. And I know it's a bit scary and intimidating because you don't know what they're gonna say. And even now, even though I go every six months, I dread if the doctor says I need to get one removed, I hate it, I really do, but obviously it's worth it. It's so, so important. I'd recommend asking your GP for a specialist, someone that does something called mole mapping. I'm trying out a new clinic soon, so I'll probably be reviewing that on my blog, but if you're not based in London, try and find your local kind of mole mapping service. When you are in the sun, always wear a sun cream. I've always worn 30 plus. Even when I was 15 and it was uncool to wear sun cream, I always wore 30. And just make sure to reapply it after you've been swimming. Just be sensible. I know it can be like quite a chore and I personally hate the feeling of sun cream when you're sandy and you're wet. But again, think about your skin frying in the sun. It's just terrible. Also make sure your sun cream has UVA and UVB in it. That's really important. Never use sunbeds. Just don't. I feel like there is no excuse. I can't believe that sunbeds are actually legal. I know some people use it if they've got psoriasis for other reasons, but if you're using it to get a tan, I mean, it just shocks me when I hear of people I know who use sunbeds. They are so, so dangerous, so unnecessary. There's fake tan and other ways of getting a nice glow. I have never, ever used a sunbed and I never will. And then my final tip would be that if you are in a country that has very hot sun or you're on a holiday, just avoid sitting in the sun between like 11.30 and two. They say 11.30 and three, but I know if you're on holiday, you kind of want to make the most of being in the sun. But I always try to avoid being directly in the sun between kind of 11.30 and two. Go and have lunch, sit in the shade, 
it's too hot, it's not good for your skin. So definitely try and avoid those kind of really hot, intense hours. So I'm gonna link the Shunburn campaign below. You guys might remember from my vlog that I did a little photo shoot, so you can go and have a look at those photos. Read more about the campaign, share it if you would like to. I really think it's something people need to talk about more. And I hope that my kind of fake tanning tips were helpful to you guys. Let me know what your favorite fake tan is at the moment because I'm always looking to try new ones. And if you have any other application tips or any other sun safety tips as well, please share them. I love it when you guys chat amongst each other and leave tips and tricks. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.